All right, exponential functions, notes, graphing. Now, in class, we'll actually go through a PowerPoint, and I've included the PowerPoint right here for you guys, but I'm going to go ahead and fill in the notes for you on this video so that you see me as we're doing it. All right, so we've already talked about an exponential function. We've written an equation. We've interpreted what it all means. So now we're going to do the graphs because you know how important the graphs are, okay? And we can look at a graph and tell a lot about something and interpret information. So it's really important. An exponential function is a function in the form of y equals a times b to the x. All this technical stuff, just so you know, it can't be equal to 1. You know, it has to go up something. Notice that the base b is a number, okay? And the exponent x is a variable. So that's one of those things that we kind of talked about a little bit, but I do think it's interesting it's switching what we usually do. Exponential functions are non-linear. They are actually curved, and I reminded y'all of this a little bit back. They're going to go up like that or down like that. They go up at a rate or down at a rate, okay? The graphs of exponential functions have an asymptote. An asymptote, and yes, that word is said just like I said, an asymptote is a line that the graph approaches, excuse me, like a boundary line. So it's a boundary line. So it basically is going to go to this point and then um, uh, it just never actually touches it. It looks like it does, but it never does. It gets down to like 0 0.000001, but that's going to be your boundary. Okay. So example one, we're going to graph y equals three to the x, find the y-intercept and set the domain range and the equation of the asymptote. So I have an xy table over here and I have an equation. Sure wish there was a handy dandy tool. I can, oh, whoa. I could use to enter those problems. Okay, guys, so we're going to go to our graphing calculator to enter the information. I'm going to clear whatever is in there. Okay. And please always make sure second, wait, let's say that second, quit. Like, what am I doing here? Second plus seven, one, two. I'm going to start fresh because I don't know what I was working on last. Actually, I was working on y'all's last video. All right, so let's go enter that equation into the calculator. Y equals 3 to the X. You're going to use your little caret key right here. That little caret key is what's going to give you that exponent. And I need to look at the table. So how do we look at the table? Second graph. And I need to start from negative 3. So I'm going to scroll up, and there are my values. Okay. So you'll have to look at the calculator, do yours. I'm going to write mine down. Actually, I'm going to pause this and write them down for you. So there they are. I mean, I'm getting mad. Okay. So now we're going to go on ahead and we are going to look at the, we're going to go on ahead and look at the graph itself and we're going to graph these. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to graph my points. So I have, remember X, let me go ahead and remind y'all, X is sideways, Y is up and down. So you're going to go sideways first, so I have negative three. It's going to be so low. It's going to be really, really hard to like, to like put it down there. I get that. Just do it as best you can. This, these are going to be really low. It's going to be about a third of the way up. So you're starting to see a little bit of a difference. Zero, one, there's our Y intercept. One, three, and two. Nine. Now, drawing these graphs is a total pain, guys, and I totally understand. I actually draw my graph on the paper like I hold my paper sideways and do it. So I'm going to do it as best I can here, and that's what I expect from y'all. Okay, it's not going to be perfect. So there is my graph, and this, as you'll see, is just kind of approaching it. It's just kind of going on. It's never actually going to get there. If you keep on scrolling in your calculator, you'll notice that it never quite gets there. It never actually touches that. Okay? So let's look next our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is right here, and that is 0, 1. Domain. Right, so how far to the left is this graph going to keep going? It's going to go to the left. That arrow means forever, which is negative infinity. And this arrow means it's going to go right forever, ever, 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 which is positive infinity. So our domain is negative infinity 
the positive infinity, which is also all real numbers. Then we have our range values. And our range values are the y values. So it, it goes, it tries to get down to this y equals zero right here, but it doesn't quite touch it. So it's not equal to it. So it goes from zero to all the way up to infinity, okay? And those are both parentheses because it doesn't include that zero. It doesn't actually touch it, which is going to bring us to our next thing. Our next thing is that boundary line, the asymptote. This is the asymptote right here. It's right along that, okay? What is the equation of that line? It's where y equals zero, okay? So it's really important you recognize that. That's going to go right up there. That is the asymptote. I try and say that a lot because my students swear. I never told them that one year. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I can't believe you don't remember that word. It's kind of funky. All right, so the asymptote, it's going to be approaching this boundary line right here. This is its boundary line. That's going to be it on most of your graphs. All right, example, well, next example. Let's just have the form y equals a times b to the x. Now, we've discussed this a lot. So b is greater than 1, or exponential growth, right? And where b is between, so let's, we'll start with this real quick. Let's remind ourselves where b is greater than 1 is a growth, right? And then we look at where b is between 0 and 1, r decay. Okay, and the important thing for y'all to remember here is that they move in the, what direction are they going? Opposite. Okay, I just wanted y'all to have, I want y'all to be a, basically be able to look at a graph really quick and just say, oh, decay goes that direction, exponential growth goes that way. I just want y'all to be able to like glance at it and tell, because sometimes you can eliminate stuff right away uh, when you look at that. So, we did a growth on the last one. I wonder what this one is. Oh, we can tell by looking because we already learned that. We can tell that one third, okay? One third is between zero and one. So this is going to be a decay problem, okay? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna go plug it in the calculator. I'm gonna go to y equals. I'm gonna clear whatever is in there and you need to put that one third in parentheses because you want the exponent to use the whole one third. I really like I do hand motions and y'all can't even see me, okay? So you want the one-third, you want that x to, like, apply to the whole one-third. So you got to do it like that. Look at the table. You're going to hit second graph, and we're going to start with negative 2 on this one. So negative 2 produces the 9, and I'm going to snap my fingers and fill in that table, okay? And there you go. Beautifully completed table. So now we're going to go graph it. As a reminder, x is sideways, y is up and down on a point. Okay, so we have negative two nine. It's going to be right there. We won't we'll pretend like that's a you know that's that's a dot. Just go with it. Negative one three. Oh look, there's our little y intercept right there. You see him? Oh look at him. Okay. About a third of the way up. And these, you just, you got to get close. That, that's it. It's, I'm not asking for perfection. Clearly, we just saw what I graphed. I'm not asking for perfection. Look, hey, hey, that one wasn't too bad, was it? No, that wasn't bad. Oh, yeah, no, no, no my pen's going to be something funky. Okay, but just remember, this is not actually going up. <laughs> that's important, okay? Um, it's not ever going back up. It's just getting closer and closer and closer to this boundary right here, okay? Don't forget your arrows at the end. So let's interpret our information. The y-intercept is right here, which is 0, 1 again. Domain is all my x values. How far to the left is this graph going to keep going? It's going to keep going forever. What is left forever? Negative infinity. And then it's going to go right forever, which is positive infinity. We also call that all real numbers, right? The range my y values. So it approaches this zero right here, and it's going to go all the way up to forever, which is infinity and beyond. And that's a parenthesis because it doesn't include it. It's not an equal to. It's as close to it as possible, which brings us next to our boundary line or our asymptote. And you'll notice it says the equation of the asymptote because it's important to realize the equation of the asymptote is y equals zero. So right here, it's a straight horizontal line on the x-axis, and that's where y equals zero. 
We have a last example on here. Okay. Not sure if we're going to get to it in class. We'll probably do it the next day is how we'll do it in class. But we have graph y equals 0.7 to the x. So I'm going to look at that 0.7, and I know right now that's going to be a decay. How? How do I know that's going to be a decay? Because that 0.7 is between 0 and 1, between it. Okay. So I need to graph it. So I'm going to go to my handy-dandy calculator. Hold that little calc up. I'm going to go to y equals. I'm going to clear whatever's in there because it types over funky. And I'm going to do 0.7 to the x. Just one number, so I didn't do parentheses. And I'm going to look at the table by doing second graph. And ooh, we'll do that some ugly numbers. But that's okay because I can estimate because they're money amounts. Money amounts I get. Okay, so we're going to go up to negative 6. And I'm going to start right there. So I'm going to plug these numbers into my table. I'm going to do two numbers past the decimal. I'm going to do one number past the decimal. This is this is going to be estimated graphing. So for this negative 6, I would put an 8.5 on it. For negative 5, I'd put a 5.9 on it. Okay? So I'm going to pause it and do And bam! Look! Magic. Magic. It went in there. Even though I just told y'all I was going to pause it and do it. You know, pretend. So now we're going to do our points, which are sideways, then up and down. So negative 6 isn't quite on here, so I'm going to go to negative 5, and I have 5.9, which is right there, okay? And then I have negative 4, which is 4.1, so it's going to be slightly above it, and that's okay. So then I have negative 3 and 2.9, which is going to be just below that 3 mark right there, right? And then I have negative 2 and just above the 2. Okay, okay so I see it starting to curve a little bit there. I see it now. And then I have, mm, let's see, negative 1 and 1 1.4, which is going to be just a little bit below there. Okay. And then I have 0, 1. There's that y-intercept. And then I have 1.7, which is right up there a little bit. Below. So I see my curve, and it's not quite as strong, but it's slider because my initial value on this one is different. My initial value is different. Okay. okay. So let's go look at our interpretation. And y'all could have gone on with this graph and saw that it gets closer and closer. So my y-intercept is 0, 1. My domain is all my x values. And again, it goes from negative infinity to infinity and beyond. Okay, just like our parabolas. Okay. Range is the y value, so it approaches that zero again. So it's going to be from zero to infinity and beyond. And then my asymptote, again, it gets closer and closer to that boundary right there. And that boundary is y equals zero. 